The Brit Oval, scene of many a great Ashes climax in the past, though few will have topped this one for drama. The best of enemies know that a draw is good enough for England, a defeat, and Australia retain the old urn. McGrath's back, Paul Collingwood's in for Simon Jones. Tail, Michael Vaughan has won the toss. First job done by the captain, England are batting. And at the end of the first hour's play, Ricky Ponting is so dismayed he reads his team the riot act. England have cruised to 70 for no wicket in just 14 overs with barely a single alarm. There was only one way for Ponting to go. After 28 wickets in the series, it was Warren's way. Oh, that's brilliant. Fantastic catch. Magnificent cricket this from the Australians and as so often led by Warren, but backed up by something special. Vaughan is going to be cranky about that. Ah! Ooh, that is close. LBW, three for Vaughan. Ah! Hold him! There it is, the battle's over. And Shane Warren gets his fourth. What a delivery. Andrew Strauss stopped the bleeding for England. Strauss went on to make 129, putting on 143 for the fifth wicket with Andrew Flintoff. But Warren got him before the close. <laughs> England 319 for seven, with honours just about even at the end of a glorious first day. But the weather took a distinct turn for the worse on Friday. After England had been bowled out for 373, Australia got their best start of the series and were 112 for no wicket at tea. The light suddenly deteriorated. To stay or to go? The choice was the Australians and they went, not to return that day. The weather again held them back on Saturday, but both openers reached their first hundreds of the series during just 45 overs of play. Hayden hung on to the close with the Australians on a menacing 277 for 296 behind England, but they hadn't bargained for what was to follow. problems last night with the pace and bounce. He's done it again straight away. Ah! Must be LDW, surely. Yep, it's a slow death from Rudy Kitson, but it is a death. Ah! That's also close. That is also out. This is a huge performance from Andrew Flintoff. <laughs> Given him the LBW. Hoggard with the swinger. <laughs> oh, that's out. That's out. Yes. Got up in the air, this will be out court. It will be out court. Shane Warner's out. Flintoff has 
struck again. Flintoff finished with 5 for 78 from 34 overs. Hoggard, 4 for 97. Australia lost their last seven wickets for 33. England had a first innings lead of six. The pressure was back on England the moment they batted again. Yes, yes! Strauss out to Warren's fourth ball. Two for one. And the weather was getting dodgy once more. While the English fans were rain dancing, the Aussies were saying, nah, this is good enough for Bondi Beach. After one interruption, Ponting and company came back out in sunglasses as if to illustrate their supporters' plea. But at 20 to 4, Michael Vaughan was offered the light again, and this time the players went off for good, a decision greeted with joy throughout the land, including in Regent's Park, where they'd been watching on a big screen. England, 34 for 1, 40 ahead, 98 overs left in the series. Within 40 minutes of Monday's start, England had moved smoothly to 67 for one. There were smiles all round. Of course, we should have known better. In the air, oh, what a catch! What a magnificent catch! <laughs> in the air, got him! warren has got him! That's a catch! That's two in a row! The Aussies are back in business! Here we go. Oh, it's got, has he got him? A big up here, not out. Not out, hit him on the arm. And then from the sixth board he faced, Peterson was dropped by Matthew Hayden. With 15 to his name, Warren, would you believe it, dropped him too. It was the biggest moment of the match. Perhaps of the series, not that we knew it at the time. Ah! Oh, that's got to be close. Oh, yes, up goes the finger. Warner's got him. It's now the last over before lunch. Oh, that's off the glove and then the thigh pad. Oh, and he didn't see that at all. Delivery from Brett Lee. 
so lucky to get away with that. He managed to get his glove up in the air and he's uh, really punched it over the top of the slip cordon. England won 2 7 for 5 at lunch. 72 overs remaining. During the break, Peterson, who had been roughed up by Lee, asked Vaughan how he should play it from here on in. Your way, said Vaughan. Gone for it. Six going all the way. That one, where's it gone? Straight in the air, it's another six! Whoa, well, Sean Tate down at fine leg. Thought that was going to be down his throat and it kept travelling and travelling. Again he goes. Sean Tate, it, it was a good effort. But it got to him so quickly and uh, he couldn't hang on to it. Oh, <laughs> what a cocker that shot was. It's, it's baseball. That it's was four, that's all that matters. Wow, what a shot. But England hadn't won the Ashes yet. with which to make a maiden test century the last test match of an Ashes series Hedden Peterson who top scored for England in the first test of the series at Lords gone off the boil a little bit in the meantime but he is back on it again today just when needed By now, Peterson had been joined by Ashley Giles, and together they steered England through the last squalls of the storm. The new boy was here to stay, how his life had changed. And remember the fall guy from Lords? How his life had changed too. They would now be written into history as members of the team of 2005 who regained the Ashes. England were finally bowled out for 335 and there was a moment to say farewell to two of Australia's greatest. The day ended farcically. The Australians came out to face four balls before bad light sent everyone off the field again. 
Even the cricketing gods couldn't quite believe that the Ashes dream was to be realised. There were a further 15 minutes before the umpires returned to call time on an incredible series.